The Bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater. Drifting along, singing a song under a Western moon. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater, starring America's great Western singers, Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage. Bringing you music, the stories, and the spirit of the great open spaces. And now, the Riders of the Purple Sage. I'm a long way from home and the blue mountain dome. Still I hear the echoes from the hills. And the sweet lily bell, my little hillbilly gal. Calling in the echoes from the hills. When I left my pappy, said, now don't do nothing wrong. I recall my mammy saying, Sonny, don't be long. So I know that someday I'll be wending my way back among the echoes from the hill. Sometimes I wonder why I have to roam. Somehow my thoughts are traveling way back home. I miss the hills, the old folks, and my little sister Lou. I wonder if they miss me too. I'm a long way from home and that blue mountain dome. Still I hear the echoes from the hills and this sweet lily bell, my little hillbilly gal, calling in the echoes from the hills. When I left my pappy said, now don't do nothing wrong. I recall my mammy saying, Sonny, don't be long. So I know that someday I'll be wending my way back among the echoes from the hills. The fashion these days is to sneer at anything that's sentimental, to laugh at any expression that might indicate a tender heart. Well, we Westerners, we don't go along with such a fashion. And we know that many of you are with us, too. So we'll continue to find more sentimental ballads in our music than marching songs. Here's one right now, and we'd like to sing it for you. We hope you like it. Remember me. Sweetest song belong to lovers in the gloaming. The sweetest days are the days that used to be. The saddest words I ever heard were words of parting. When you said, sweetheart, remember me. Remember me when the candle lights are gleaming. Remember me at the close of a long, long day. It would be so sweet when all alone I'm dreaming. Just to know you still remember me. You told me once that you were mine alone forever. And I was yours till the end of eternity. But all those vows are broken now, and we will never be the same except in memory. Remember me when the candlelights are gleaming. Remember me at the close of a long, long day. It would be so sweet when all alone I'm dreaming. Just to know you still remember me. The cowpuncher led a hard life in the old days. He was apt to be in the saddle from dawn to dusk. And even his routine duties were usually the toughest kind of assignments calling for the utmost of concentration and skill. The cowboy's hardiness and self-reliance were important factors in the winning of the West. Today, famous Weber's bread is so good and its quality is so consistent that it has become the choice of more Southern California homes than any other bread. Furthermore, Weber's bread is always soft and fresh and its freshness lasts. Look for the loaf in the blue and white checked gingham wrapper at your neighborhood grocers. It's the good loaf the Weber's Loaf.
The writers of the Purple Sage and an old-fashioned folk song about what must have been a dear old gal, Nellie Bly. Yeah, but she's not going to be a dear old gal when we get through with her. She'll be from Dixie. You mean we're going to swing out with Nellie Bly? We sure ain't going to let her do a minuet all the way. Wait a minute, boys, boys. Let's have some respect for age. <laughs> Nellie Bly, Nellie Bly, bring the broom along. We'll sweep the kitchen clean, my dear, and have a little song. Hi, Nellie, ho, Nellie, listen, love to me. Sing for you, play for you, the dulcet melody. Nellie Bly has a voice like a turtle dove. Hears it in the meadow, and I hear it in the grove. Hi, Nellie, ho, Nellie, listen, love to me. Sing for you, play for you, without some melody. Nellie Bly has a heart warm as a cup of tea, bigger than the sweet potato down in Tennessee. Hi, Nellie, oh, Nellie, listen, love to me. Sing for you, play for you, dulce melody, dulce melody. Here's a description in music of a great and beautiful state, Oregon, as the writers of the Purple Sage sang it in the Republic picture, Oregon Trail. Oregon, 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 Oregon. On my way, I'm heading west. I'll never stop to rest. I'll make Oregon my home. Oregon, where the timber hits the sky. The dawn, the morning dew. I'm on my way, I'm heading west. I'll never stop to rest till there's Oregon in view. The rolling hills of Oregon, the fields of golden grain, the plains I love to dwell upon, the sunshine and the rain. Oregon, once I'm there, I'll never. I'm on my way, I'm heading west, I'll never stop to rest, I'll make Oregon my home. Well, it's time now for Foy Willing and the Riders of the Purple Sage to tell us another of their adventures in the West. This week, they've called their story Young Love and Mignogna Joe. The trail a cowboy travels is often dusty. His life is lonely. Sometimes he finds himself suffering thirst, sometimes freezing cold. Yet no hero of fiction was ever a figure of greater romance than the American cowboy. Perhaps that's because there are adventurers in the West who seem to be first on the side of law, then on the side of crime, and one can never be quite certain which. Manana Joe is one of them. Polite, smiling, and dangerous, he is feared, hunted, and accused, yet trusted by those who know him best. The writers of the Purple Sage never receive a message from Manana Joe that they don't answer without question, no matter what the circumstance. See him yet, boy? Not yet. He's a guy you don't see, Al. Manana Joe just comes up out of nowhere and speaks to you. We better stop here. The message said he'd wait by these boulders. Hey, this sort of thing gives me the willies. When Manana Joe sends for you, you never know whether the sheriff or a band of outlaws are on his trail. You wrong me, amigo. Manana, how Oh, hello. Your eyes are not good, huh? 
Where in the world were you, Joe? When the hunter is after a squirrel, the squirrel lies flat on the branch of a tree or on a rock and cannot be seen. I learned from him. You mean you're up in one of those rocks? What sort of hunters are after you, Joe? Amateurs, I think. A ponderous sheriff and six ancient patriarchs who do him honor as deputies despite their rheumatism. This is no place for us, boy. Why is the sheriff after you? Last week, a messenger bringing the payroll to Benson's feedlot was held up. But let us not discuss it. Wait a minute. The sheriff's after you for that robbery. See? Why? He thinks I did it. The messenger recognized the hold-up man's gun. It was one of mine. Did you do it, Joe? No. The gun was stolen from me. Then why not go and prove the sheriff's wrong? Because proof would involve confessing where I was at the hour of the robbery. And at that hour, I was uh, <coughs> singing a love song under the window of the sheriff's plump wife. Hey, Joe. here, hound. <laughs> Only because I am a philanthropist, no other reason. I saw the squareness of the sheriff's head, the flatness of his feet. A wife of his could die without even knowing there is romance in the world. I sang a song to her. Now her spirit will be young and lovely whenever she remembers. Joe, you're either a reprobate or a saint. I don't know who it is. Me neither. <laughs> I wish I could make women young by singing. Hmm. Let's get back to this uh, payroll robbery, Joe. You know, the sheriff... Senor Neil Birch and his band stole the payroll. But why do we talk of such things? There is no love or poetry in them. Senor, it's... Love belongs to the very young. In them, when they are in love, one seems a bit of heaven. Watch him, boy. He's leading up to something. Six nights ago, the sheriff was on my trail. Oh, very close. And I found myself at the Circle T Ranch. You know where that is? Yeah. Then you know the small grove of trees near the house where I was hidden and was waiting in the darkness when the sheriff came up. I drew my guns I intended to shoot before I was discovered. And at that moment, the door of the ranch house opened. In the light that shone through stood a girl. She called to the sheriff. She denied anyone had come, and the sheriff believed her. He went away. Then, ah, oh, senores, it was a moment that will live forever with me. The girl came over to where I was and whispered, You are safe now, manana, Joe. I leaned down in the saddle, kissed her softly on the cheek in gratefulness. Don't he have that darndest way with gals? Oh, it's just luck, that's all. Oh, and man. every evening since, I have visited the grove of trees, and always... There is food waiting. She must be looking out for you, Joe. Maybe she's fallen in love with you. It is tragedy. Last week, she was engaged to marry a boy of her own kind. This week, she will not even let him call. Yeah? Well, that's too bad, Joe. Amigos, be philanthropists, huh? Take this bundle. Close of mine on it. Give it to the boy, her sweetheart. Tell him to put them on and ride to the grove of trees. Tell him to wait until the girl comes out with food and to kiss her on the cheek softly when he sees her. Tell him to say that all these evenings it has been he, not Manana Joe, who waited for her. They will cry a little, but they will fall in each other's arms. And so it should be. Well... It the... is a small thing to do. Here, the bundle of clothes. Will you take it to him? Sure, Joe. We'll be glad to. Yeah, we'll ah, go, gracias. Joe. Dear children will hold your memory in reverence. And um, you had better go soon before the sheriff and his patriarchs find you here talking with an outlaw. <laughs> Al, Johnny. What's the matter, boy? Don't let anybody see you, but take a look there. Through the saloon window. Hey, that fellow's playing cards, you mean? The hombres with all the money in front of them are Neil Birch's men. And according to Manana Joe, they pull the payroll stick up. The kid with them is the boy we're looking for, young Jim Doug Douglas. Well, how come Neil Birch and his men are wearing glasses? No wonder I didn't recognize them. Maybe their eyesight is bad. That could be the reason they're wearing glasses. Ah, they're cleaning the kid. It sure looks like it. Not much money in his pile. He probably took up with him because he's disgusted. Decided to be a tough guy to show the gal he didn't care. Yeah, now real tough guys are taking him for every cent he's got. Hey, Manana Joe must have been telling the truth about the holdup. Take a look in Neil's holster. Hey, one of Joe's guns, sure enough. Hey, what do we do, go in and bust up the game for him? I think we'll wait right here until the kid comes out. Let's find out for sure if they've cleaned him. There'll be plenty of time for us to go to work after that. <laughs> Looks beat down, don't he? Well, how would you look if some other guy kissed your gal on the cheek? Watch it, boys. Howdy, Jim. What do you want? Guess maybe you don't know us, Jim. I'm Foy Wilson. I don't want to know you. I don't want to know anybody. Sounds as if you had bad luck in there. Neil Birch and his men get your money? That's none of your business. I'll do as I please with my money. 
What are you bothering that kid for, Willing? Oh, howdy, Neil. I ask you what you want with that kid. Well, I don't reckon there's any law saying a man can't talk to who he pleases. There's this kind of law. I'd leave the gun right where it is, Neil. In the holster. That gun can get you into a lot of trouble. What do you mean? Why so honor with me, Neil? I know Jim lost money in the game. I was just about to lend him enough so he can go back and try to get even. Is that right, Jim? Well, would you lend me some? Would you really? Why not? Well, where in the world would we get money for it? Suppose you'd be ready to pick up the game again in about uh, two hours, Neil. That'll give me time to ride over and get a stake for the kid. Suits me fine. And we may join you. Just to see that there's no cheating. <laughs> the more of you, the better we'll like it. But the game will be played in my room at the hotel, not here. We'll be there. And remember, my boys will take care of any trouble you fellas care to start. You sure got us in a mess now, boy. Oh, even if we had money, I wouldn't want to play cards with him. Boys, we're riding back to see Manana Joe. And Jim, you're riding back with us. Manana Joe? You know Manana Joe? You bet we do. And he's got something to say to you, Jim. I think we ought to give him a chance to say it in person. I should beat you within an inch of your life treating an innocent girl that way, Manana Joe. And I'd do it too, except that... <laughs> except that I am the toughest hombre in the country, huh? No. Except Betty isn't worth the trouble. She's no good. Wait, wait she... now, Senor Jim. That is not nice talk. Betty is a lovely cloud of springtime. She's weak. She's romantic. She lives in a dream world half the time. But so do all women. Ah, senor, you are very young not to know that. I am not young. Amigo, look at us. At Foy, at Al, Johnny. Look at me. Could a woman choose one of us as a mate for all her life were she not able to weave dreams about us, picture us as much more than we are? Well, just as you do as I say, Jim. Put on these clothes of mine. Wait for your Betty at the Grove of Trees after sundown. She will be a little angry when you confess it has been you, not a dangerous outlaw she visited each night. Ah, but she will be yours again. And that is the important thing. Joe, about the card game. Oh, Sid, again. Uh, Senor Neal and his men are failing in their eyesight, you say? Well, not the way they're picking up Jim's money, they're not. I said they were wearing glasses, Joe. Well, glasses mean failing eyesight, no? Well, I think I'm going to give you and Johnny a big bag of money. Huh? Why not? I have plenty hidden nearby. You boys and Jim go back and play cards with those hombres. Well, sure. And please, do not lose all the money I give you for at least two hours. The game must last that long. How about me, Joe? Yeah, Foy can lose money as fast as us. Yeah. I would like you to remain here for a while, Foy. Cards are bad for you. Also, I need you to help me do something a little special. It will be good fun. And it will even have a little danger in it. What's the idea of asking me to stay here, Joe? I ought to be in town helping Al and Johnny get the kids' money back. <laughs> They will not get the money back. No, not as long as Senor Neal and his men wear those glasses. Well, the... the cards are marked. The marks cannot be seen by the naked eye. Only with the glasses. Special glasses. So that's it. I'm afraid the lenses will have to be smashed before the game is on the level. That's our job. Crash the game, then accidentally break the glasses. That is a job I do. Alone. But you can't go into town, Joe. Neil Birch has your gun. He'll think you came for it. He'll kill you on sight. And the sheriff's looking for you, too. I will avoid the sheriff. Let me crash the game. Al and Johnny are there, and I can depend on them to help. No, 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 boy. I can do that. But there is something I cannot do, and you can't. You must ride over and visit with Betty. Well, I thought that matter was all taken care of, Jim. Senor, are you very young, too? When Jim confesses, Betty will think he has been making a fool of her. And the woman must always be made to believe she has put something over on the man. You ride to see Betty. Tell her Jim tried to make her love him more by pretending to be a dangerous outlaw. Hmm. That might do it. Mm -hmm. Then when Jim confesses, she will be able to say, Oh, she knew all the time it was he who kissed her on the cheek. She will scold him. She will call him stupid. But she will... <sighs> ah, senor. If youth only had the knowledge of age, or age had the ability of youth, what love would be... All right, Joe, I'll do it. And me, while you are aiding romance, I will be stomping on eyeglasses worn by crooks. Just be careful, the sheriff. Meet me in exactly one hour and 45 minutes. Meet me at the entrance to the hotel so you can escort me away as I leave. And please, be ready with your guns. We may have to shoot somebody, boy. <laughs>
I see your cards. Uh, a pair of tens and a pair of jacks. <laughs> Poor queen. Doggone, I This is getting get disgusted. <laughs> your deal, Jim. Seems like we ought to win a hand once in a while. All right, senores. Reach for the sky. Look at us, Manana Joe. The first man to move will feel the pain of hot lead. Manana, you can't get away with this. You see too well. Your eyes are too good with those glasses. Uh, this will fix them. You and yours too. Oh, the sheriff will hear about this. You know the sheriff's already looking for you for that payroll. You are shortening your life, senor. Uh. You, the young one, the kid. Me? And the money here. All of it. But take warning, no false moves. Well, what'll I do? Give it to him, you fool. We'll get him later. So don't risk your neck now. The guns, too. That one, particularly. Gracias. Stay where you are. Do not try to follow me. I am not alone. I have men stationed outside. They will shoot if you attempt to leave the room. Boy. Boy, are you here? Sure, Joe. Here I am. Good. Take this money. Give it to Jim when you see him. Money? Joe, you held him up. You weren't in there long enough to win. Let me talk. I'm in a hurry. I did hold them up. I got the money, also the gun, which was once mine, and which was used in the payroll robbery. I'm going to put it in Neil's saddlebag. Report to the sheriff that it is there. Let the sheriff find it. Then the real robber can be arrested. But Neil, he'll report that you held him up. See, si, but he will not report that the gun was taken. Not this gun. Or he will convict himself more surely than ever. He'll try to get you, though. See, si. He will report I took the money. That is why I'm in such a hurry. I must put this gun where the sheriff will find it. Then I must get on my own horse and ride. Adios, senor. Until our trails cross again. What are we doing here, boy? Hush up, Johnny. There they are. Under the trees. Yeah. Pretty nice, huh? Of course, I knew all the time it was you, Jim. Now, you couldn't have, Betty. But I did. I kept up the pretense because I wanted to see how long you'd go on. Gee, she's putting her head on his shoulder. Yeah. But I'll have to scold you, too, Jim. Don't you know what you did was dangerous? When Yana Joe's an outlaw, why, the sheriff might have shot you down without a word. Oh, but you're sweet, Jim. You're awfully sweet to want to make me love you more. <laughs> Joe. Ah, he's nice, no? They are together now. <laughs> yes, life on the range was violent and full of hardships. And only the physically and mentally strong could survive. The pioneers who developed the West worked hard and played hard. Although they didn't have many of the comforts that we consider necessary today, there's one thing they did insist on, good food. Modern Westerners insist on good food, too. That's why Weber's bread is so popular. Weber's bread is good food, good bread. We don't suppose you're interested in how Weber's bread is baked, but may we just say this. Weber's bread is good bread because everything that goes into it is the best that money can buy. Visit your neighborhood grocer. See if you don't agree that Weber's bread meets your own idea of what good bread should be. The last song on each of our programs is a song we'd like to see recorded and handed down from generation to generation as music which catches the spirit of the real West. This week, we've chosen Song of the Sierras. i 
is lonesome to a lonely western moon. It's the nearest place to heaven where a man is free. Before we go, we'd like to thank our actors for their help in telling this week's story. Paul Conrad, Tom Holland, Beverly Brown, and Harry Bartell is Manana Joe. This is Foy Willing speaking for Al Sloy, Scotty Harrell, and Johnny Paul, the writers of the Purple Sage, saying so long and good luck to all of you. Drifting along, singing a song. From Hollywood, you have heard your all-star Western theater, a B.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers, Boy Willing and the writers of the Purple Sage. The script was by Ray Wilson and direction by Tom Hargis. This is Bob Green speaking. Western Theater came to you from Columbia Square. This is KNX in Los Angeles.